Okay, I wanted to go over this uh, camshaft degree uh, theory process. If you watch the first four videos, you would see what I've done up to this point. Now, this dial indicator that I've got sitting, you're gonna see I've got it kind of in the center of the piston and the reason I do that is the piston can rock back and forth in the bore a little bit and if you had the indicator pointing up here it could make it a little incorrect the reading if you were up on an up or a downstroke now when I check this if you'll notice, when I'm going, the piston's coming up. See, if you're watching that um, indicator, to get to zero, that's at top dead center. Uh, actually, not quite. There's top dead center. Um, okay, I'm going to adjust that a little bit. Okay, so we know that that's top dead center. Now I'm gonna come past or down below. I'll scoot you up here. I'm gonna go below top dead center and I'm gonna come up. Um, I just kind of uh, take my ratchet here and dance it a little bit so that I knock her right to the perfect spot which is zero um, actually that would be a hundred before okay uh, here's 50 thousandths before top dead center now if you look at my gauge or my excuse me my degree wheel I'm on 12 degrees um, and that's what I'm I'm trying to find the center um, because this piston will actually dwell for a second when it's at top dead center or bottom dead center you have to find the middle of two readings and I'm just using 50 thousandths from top dead center and I was at 12 degrees at 50 thousandths now I'm gonna come up it's gonna go that's top dead center. Now, if I come down, the piston's actually coming back down. Hopefully you can see that piston. I'm trying to view that a little bit. If I were to stop right there, um, if you remember, we were talking about oil clearances. There's about two to three thousandths worth of oil clearance on that rod bearing journal. And at this point, or when I was going up, the piston, that clearance in the rod bearing, it would have been, you know, it's obviously I'm pushing up. Um, but in this scenario, I'm pulling the piston down. So I'm actually, there could be an error in my reading because I have the two thousandths or so that I've got in oil clearance, I'm pulling the piston down. So what I do to get this reading is I'll go past a little bit and then I will push it up. So I'm on the back side, but I'm pushing the piston up again to get the other reading. Now <clears throat> I'm at, um, you know, my 12 degrees again. So I know that my top dead center mark is accurate. <clears throat> now that's the always the first thing you do is verify that your top dead center mark is correct uh, every time you go to check this because like I said you you can bump this pointer without even knowing it and it's just good practice to always just uh, look at that now I actually, 
I don't need this indicator anymore because I know where top dead center is. So I'm going to remove this just so it's uh, hopefully a little bit less confusing. Now I'm going to crank you up here. Um, and <clears throat> that indicator that I have on the lifter, if you'll notice, it is parallel to the lifter travel. If it were at an angle, then it wouldn't read correct as the lifter travels up. It could fall off of that little bitty lip that I'm, I'm taking my reading off of. So get it on a, you know that surface and make sure that it doesn't move off of that um, because it's sitting at an angle as that lifter travels. Now, I'm going to try to set this down here again. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see everything. But, um, well, let me crank this down a little. Okay. Now, if you'll see the lifters coming up and my um well i guess i reached the top there didn't i okay well i guess i passed it <laughs> okay come to the top Ooh, i guess it's right there so i'm gonna move that to zero I didn't zero that in the last video. Um, I hope that wasn't too confusing. Um, but I'll zero it this time just so you're getting the uh, whole gist of this. Now, I'm going to back this back up. And I'm going to come to 50 thousandths before maximum lift 50 thousandths right there and I'm going to take my reading which is 57 and I'm going to write that down now oops sorry now <clears throat> I'm going to go all the way to full lift and as this drops back down, I'm going to go to 50 again, and then my reading on the wheel is 144. Now, the math of this. Um, and you can see all my assorted bushings. <clears throat> the math of this, let me bring this down. So the center between those two readings on the degree wheel, we take, um, 57 plus 144 that's 201 but I divide that by 2 so right now I've got the camshaft degreed in at 100 and a half degrees I was shooting for a hundred um, I'm not gonna screw around to try to achieve a half of a degree it's a half of a degree isn't going to make uh, any difference at all in an engine like this. Um, so this is where I'm going to leave the camshaft. Is it a hundred and a half degrees? Um, I had to change that bushing, you know, one more time to achieve this. 
but uh, <coughs> this um, hopefully this these four videos that I did previously and this one will be a little better explanation of uh, checking the camshaft timing <clears throat> now usually what I'll do um, because I know that this top dead center mark is zero I'll leave that my degree wheel before I pull it off I'll set that at zero and then I'll put my um, timing chain cover on and my harmonic balancer on um, actually I you end up rotating the engine a little bit to do that uh, after you get the timing chain cover on and the harmonic balancer on the timing tab like where you would use a timing light to set your timing that is something that those tabs just for production tolerances and who knows what those are usually not accurate if you just 